Hello everyone, welcome to this new Reset Revolution interview for connection. Hello everyone, welcome to this new Reset Revolution interview. Today we will be joined by Diane Kim to talk about diet culture in South Korea. Hi Diane. Hello. How are you? Um, I'm good. It's my second time on the channel, so thank you for having me again. <laughs> and right. yeah, I'm here to talk about diet culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself a little bit? Yeah, um, my name is Diane Kim, and I lived in Korea for three years during my middle school years. And during that time, I had had several encounters with um, the beauty standard, well, not several, more like everyday kind of experiences with the beauty standard of Korea. And it kind of, and society as a whole kept trying to like, um, uh, put this message into my head that I wasn't perfect and I needed to change. And by doing these things, I could change and become a new me and feel so much better about myself. Okay, thank you for coming on here and talking about it. Um, so let's dive right into it. Um, I think to begin with, it's a good thing to understand what is South Korea's relation to beauty. So like, according to you, what would you say is, how would you say beauty is pursued by the South Korean society? Um, well, from what I have seen and experienced, um, being skinny is one of the biggest parts about, about being considered beautiful in Korea, especially for women. So you may have heard about a 50 kilo rule, and this actually came from a K-drama where this dude had a line that was like, if a woman weighs over 50 kilograms, she must be nuts. And this caused a big controversy because it highlighted once again, South Korea's very demanding and very unrealistic beauty standards, especially towards women. So mm -hmm. um, a few of the things that are considered beautiful in Korea is having a small face. Having a small face is the first step to being beautiful, you may say. And I tell my and I sometimes I tell my friends that, oh, you have such a small face. And they look at me like in a really weird way. Like, they're like why would that matter? Why is that important? Right. But I've just been told so many times and I've seen it on the media so many times that if someone has a small face, like automatically they're considered beautiful. And also having big eyes. So like double eyelids and what we call a heart, which is like a bit of fat under the eye. That's considered very beautiful because it makes your eyes look bigger and more feminine per se. Having a V-neck, having like a V-shaped jaw. So... A V-shaped jaw is also very desirable as well. And having a small, small mouth, but very plump lips. That's also considered very, that's also kind of lip shape that a lot of women want, as well as a small but pointy nose and straight eyebrows and also fair skin. So as many people who maybe watch Korean drama or have seen K-pop stars, you may have noticed that a lot of them are extremely pale. And that's just another one of the beauty standards that is um, required by society. Let me see. And for men, for men, they have to be um, muscular by, per se. They have to kind of have like that triangle shape where they have broad shoulders, but then a slim waist. And they can't be too skinny or too fat. And they can't be too muscular, but not, but have no muscles whatsoever. So there has to be like that in between. And um, apparently, a lot of men, a, a beauty standard for men is to have, like, dyed hair. So they prefer, like, a darker brownish kind of hair, as well as um, fashionable outfits and a slim facial features. So big eyes is also one thing, but, um, like, a smaller or, like, sharper eyes is uh, is also one. And also double eyelids is also a must for men as well. And also fair skin. So fair skin, pale skin is um, a beauty standard for both men and women. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from what I'm hearing, I'm guessing the, well, not even guessing, it's pretty obvious, but the beauty standards seem 
particularly harsh and strict. And so how would you say that, like, how do you feel these beauty standards and this pressure to lose weight or, or whatnot? How, how do you feel um, or how have you seen them being implemented? Well, um, it's one of the first things that you notice straight off the bat in Korea. So if you go to like the nearest subway station, the nearest bus station, or like even just turn on TV, you'll see hundreds of ads targeted towards weight loss, plastic surgery, makeup, um, and and more. Like diet pro like diet programs, pills, food, superfoods, all that. And they're all targeted towards making a better you so kind of the media it, it's it um plants this it, this uh, message in you that you're not perfect and you should not be satisfied with how you look right now because you can do much better and by taking these steps like dieting makeup um plastic surgery um exercise you can you can achieve a better you and a prettier you and be one step closer to looking like the k-pop idols or the actors and actresses that you see on tv so mm -hmm. um for me personally um every time there's this um subway station in korea where everywhere you look it's just all plastic surgery advertisements it's all targeted towards how get bigger eyes you want that double eye eyelid surgery we can do it for you get a point to your nose, get fair skin, um, get that V-shaped jaw that you wanted so much. And also, um, uh, it's also, that it's kind of like cultural-wise as well, because um, in Korea, a lot of parents gift their daughters um, double eyelid surgeries as a gift for um, passing sumen, which is the Korean SATs, or getting, in t or getting accepted into university. Because... Um, because having that um, visual um, face, having that beautiful um, outer look is considered a very big asset in Korea because um, companies and like um, future husband or wife families, they care a lot about appearances. And a lot of companies, they are very biased towards how people look. So a lot of companies require like photo, photo rec photos for your application. And sometimes they'll they won't pick you because you're too ugly or you're too fat because they want to have that like um image that their company is perfect. So the so and they'll also be very biased towards people who are prettier or handsomer than other employees, which I feel is a very big problem because sometimes they use only looks as a merit and they don't look at brains or what this person is capable of. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Um, so talking about weight, I've heard ads for diets in the metro. Um, doing my homework to prepare this interview, I've also seen several um, listings of occasions where K-pop stars um, mentioned their diet and it has apparently become a trend of trying to follow these diets. And I saw that it went from pretty much anywhere to eating very low carb mm -hmm. to eating ice cubes only. Um, so that's that. Um, I feel like just saying it is very shocking. Um, yeah. So um, K-pop star diets are very popular in Korea. And a very famous one is the IU diet, where she consumed one apple, two sweet potatoes, and a protein powder drink every day. And mm -hmm. just hearing about it, it's unrealistic, and it's completely, it's complete, it will completely destroy your body and your health, because no one can survive an entire day on an apple, two sweet potatoes, and a protein powder drink, let alone do that for a, for like a long period of time. But this diet kind of blew up in Korea because they saw the results that it had on her. They didn't care about all the side effects and all of the negative things that she had to go through to get to there. But they only looked at the positive, which was that she lost a lot of weight in a very short amount of time. So mm. this diet became very popular and was like reshared, retweeted all over in all over social media platforms. It was talked about constantly on various TV programs. 
and a lot of women tried this diet, followed this diet to see the same results that I had on her. But the problem is that because um, this diet apparently helped her lose five kilos in five days, which is very unrealistic. And it means that in the future, she might have like yo-yo, like she will gain that weight back really, really quickly. But no one cared about that. They only cared about the fact that she lost five kilos in five days. So, and this evidently led to a lot of failed mishaps. But, and a lot of people after trying it and after hearing stories from others, they knew that this wasn't a very healthy diet and they knew that it just wouldn't work. But um, in Korea, it doesn't matter how you get there in the end as long as you lose weight it's all that matters they don't care about the process like they do in um, western society where a lot of people promote healthy ways to lose diet like eat a lot of eat a lot and exercise a lot and take care of your mental health but you can still see the same results but in korea it's more like if you have to starve starve just lose the weight because um Yeah, it's just a very result-based kind of thing. And for men as well, there's this diet called the Huisong diet, where for 30 days, this singer went through this very extreme diet to lose like 10 kilos. And um, um, I don't remember the exact details, but it was a very, very, very extreme diet. Like the exercises that he did, he exercised for like five hours a day or something. It was just very extreme. But um, this was also hugely popular because of the fast results that were created through these diets. But later on, these stars warned their fans not to do these diets because they knew how unhealthy and how detrimental it was to their mental and physical health because it destroyed their bodies. And they were also extremely fatigued and they they kind of like fell into depression and the like eating disorders as well. Like so. A lot of the diets that we see in on social media or being promoted on television in Korea are not healthy, and most of them are very like extreme and slow and like um, short term based diets based results that will lead to worse um, consequences in the future. Okay. Um, I, I've heard you mentioned mental health, and that's, I think, our next point. Um, during my research, um, I've noticed that most statistics were about women. So I'm guessing these like weight requirements are, once again, unfortunately, mainly targeted at women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I found this... terrifying um, statistic that said um, one quarter of South Korean women in their teens or 20s, so around our age, um, suffer from an eating disorder, uh, which whichever it may be. And that made me, that kind of made me wonder, is um, mental health and our mental health, is mental health and eating disorders, are they hidden in in South Korean society? Are they being addressed um, even in the most, in the smaller ways? Well, um, it's true that this diet culture is more um, based on women because for women, they're all expected because society kind of expects them to look like these K-pop and actor and actresses because that's what they believe is what's fundamentally beautiful and men have also kind of um kind of um, repeatedly um said that we like women that are skinny being fat just means that you're lazy you're not taking care of yourself you're not doing a very good job looking after your mental health you only know how to like um complain about your weight but you're not doing anything about it so um being fat is seen as like a symbol of laziness and Um, low per- low self-perseverance and low lack of motivation, right? Which mm-hmm. is extremely stressful, especially like I myself, I'm a bigger side, I'm, I'm on the bigger side of in Korea. And it's very, very stressful because you can just, because like, even if no one's like directly saying it to you or no one's like looking at you or doing that, you still feel extremely self-conscious about yourself because 
of the way that media and everything around you is just kind of like targeting you as that um low so like slow lack of motivation like no no like no motivation to change change yourself whatsoever right but like weight loss isn't as easy like isn't that easy and a lot of people like they go through various health issues or like Just like um, genetically, they may not be able to lose weight as quickly as others, but um, society kind of just shoves that to the side and they just focus on losing weight. So mental health is a taboo subject in Korea, even to this day, even though it has been getting better. It's still extremely difficult to bring up any sort of mental health issues without being called, without being... Um, Um, labeled or criticized in some way and um, diet culture has especially not helped with mental health at all because um, a lot of these young women they are so ashamed and they're so ashamed of how they look and how they feel and they want so bad to become to look like these k-pop stars and be called beautiful that they will starve themselves they will go through these extreme diets like Like, they will do anything they can to try and lose weight and look beautiful on the outside. When on the inside, they're kind of just crumbling inside. But they don't address that because they don't want to seem weak or they don't want to seem, like, lazy, you know? So I feel like that's one thing that the Korean government and Korean media needs to um, work on portraying because it's not healthy for anyone of any age. Okay, so are you saying that even like between those friends, it's not something that might come up? Oh no, weight loss is a very popular topic amongst friends. Like, like here, here you don't see like when you meet your friends, you don't go, oh, I've oh I've gained so much weight in like the last five days. You know, like I need to go on a diet. Like that's not a very common thing that that the you that people here would talk about. Like. You haven't heard any of those conversations, for example. But in Korea, it's one of the most common topics to talk, be talked about. Is like when you're with your friends and you're eating lunch, for example, mm -hmm. um, you might be like, "Oh, I should, I should really stop eating. I've, I've gained so much weight in like the past week," or like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I, I'm gonna start like my diet on Monday because like I've gained so much weight." It's a very, very common topic to talk about, and a lot of um, students like I've, I've. myself heard a lot of these conversations where like oh i've gained so much weight in like the last month like what should i do like these kinds of um conversations just go by very um casually mm -hmm. and they're always like oh yeah you should definitely go on a diet and they're like and a lot of the times like a lot of girls seem very proud when they're like oh i haven't had dinner for like an entire month and i lost five kilos they're very proud of that achievement because it shows to other people that They have that motivation and they have that perseverance to um to get what they want. Mm -hmm. In a sense. Oh. Okay. Um, wow. Um that doesn't feel I don't know, it feels so far away for some reason. And wow. H have you like noticed any sort of change like i know i know that lately i mean lately for the past like two years or a bit more maybe uh you know there's been the body positive movement um that's gaining popularity is there something similar happening in south korea well it's not evident but um this diet culture has slowly been taking change like K-pop stars such as Mama Mufasa or Jessie, they've um, really helped in kind of changing the perspective on weight and beauty standards in Korea because these two stars, they don't, they are not in, they're not, they do not fit in like the Korean beauty standards, you know, like they, they have a darker skin, they have like a curvier body, um, they don't have like the, the big feminine features that is so, um, that Koreans love but they're but they've been promoting body positivity and they've been promoting um self-confidence and to be confident in who you are and to love yourself no matter what 
like no matter what body you're in. But in terms of like advertisements or like just the government in general trying to change their the whole perspective on body positivity, I can't say that I've seen much difference because mm-hmm. even now when I go on social media, I see these posts now and then which like choose, like out of these nine photos, which one is your body type? And then in and then in like the info section, they'll say if you're this and this you're fine if you're this and this you should start exercising from tomorrow if you're this and this you better work on yourself and um when i went to visit korea in the summer and i went to tegu there was this um a public um monument no not a monument but like a public um statue maybe that that had like different widths and in, and on top it said like um this is like this this width and if you can pass through there you're like normal if you can pass through here you're skinny if you can pass through here you're super skinny if you can you can pass through here then you're fat if you can't pass through here then um you're 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 you need to start exercising if you can't pass through here you're you're an alien it's like i saw that and i was really shocked because i couldn't believe that it was this was like in a public space and they were like and they were using this as kind of sh- assess kind of like a standard for body positive for body types and like it's because c- it's very shameful if you think about it if you can't fit through one of the things because then you're you're labeled as you should start exercising from tomorrow which is yeah. very which can really degrade your self-worth and confidence yeah um, and with all the like standards and pressure the the fact that it's in a public space must bring some sort of like humiliation at some point yeah and it's like and the problem is that people don't know when to stop so um people so korea wants you to be skinny but then if you're too skinny you're malnourished and you're not taking care of yourself either and you're disgusting to look at because and you look like a child because you're too skinny but then if you gain too much weight and you look you start to look a bit chubby you've stopped you've like let yourself go you're not taking care of yourself at all like uh, where did that motivation go you look terrible you can't, and and so they want a certain body type and they want that person to stay that way forever which is very unrealistic um thinking seeing that our bodies change all the times and depending on our mood or like whatever's going on that day you know we could look a bit more bloated than usual or we could we could eat more than usual but then then that's all like um coming back to us as bullets and to and comments towards the way we look mhm wow um the fact that um we just talked about it being like publicly not recognized but kind of displayed um it also makes me think i remember watching this movie a year or two ago which was about um this woman who had a lot of complexes about her weight and the way she looked and everything and she i think she fainted or something and when she woke up she gain confidence like she was suddenly super confident she she felt good in her body and everything and i i don't remember the name of it but maybe some of you guys will um and i also remember watching this movie which was the venus of degu i think um and i remember noticing the difference between i don't know if i'm generalizing anything or you know but what kind of surprised me is that I feel like I watched a, a few other dramas on on the same topic um and I've never seen a kind of a show that where the main character didn't go on a journey to get skinnier um but instead like they would go on a journey to get skinnier sorry and they wouldn't try to accept themselves is it is like is it something bad or that isn't necessarily how can i say that is it is accepting yourself not really a priority at all in in south korea yeah um going back to dramas and movies there are very pop- there's a 
two famous examples I can think of right now. One is called My Venus, which basically has like this chubbier lawyer who's mistreated because she's chubbier than the other lawyers. And so she goes on this diet to lose weight. And then suddenly after she loses weight, everyone treats her differently. She suddenly like they treat her nicer, you know. And that just really shocked me because I couldn't believe that the way people treated someone would change this drastically because of how much they weighed or how they looked like before and after their weight loss. And for this movie as well, there was this movie where um, this very oversized, um, oversized woman was a very good singer, but no label would ever want to debut her as a singer because she was too fat. So she was like a she was like a ghost singer and she would sing for other pretty people with no talents. And then one day she went through an entire like um um plastic surgery for her entire body and she came out as this beautiful, beautiful person. And suddenly the way everybody around her the way every her everybody around her started treating her from strangers to like her friend like everyone just changed so drastically. And suddenly she felt so accepted and so much so, so loved. And um, she got so many opportunities, like people heard her voice and she was like, oh my gosh, she has such a great voice. She'd be such a great singer. And they wanted her to debut. And it was just really sad to see that um, people, the way people treat someone changes so drastically just because of their weight. And self-acceptance is um, a very um, hard thing, I think, for Koreans to do because we're always told that we can do better and we should always thrive to do better and we should never sell for, for what we have now. We should always try and go for more. So um, no one's ever really satisfied with themselves. Of course, now it's getting better. But like even the people who are satisfied with themselves, they've been told by societies... Um, Uh, level uh, societies um what they um quality of what beauty like beauty standards the society standard of beauty that they're beautiful that they're handsome you can be happy with yourself because you're so beautiful you're so handsome like don't worry you've got this but for anyone who doesn't fit in that standard it's just like try harder Okay, so I guess like these movies are more of a, it's kind of like um, an entertaining advertisement to like go on a diet or something. Yeah, and um, social media as well. Like I come, I come back to this because, like, the post that I told you about—that's only one of the things. A lot of the other ones will be like, "Oh, check out her body," and then be like, and then the last type is like, "Let's start dieting from tomorrow," or it'd be like, "How to lose weight in a month," and then it'll show like, um, "This is what you should eat: breakfast, lunch, and dinner for this week." And then this week, this is what you should do. This week, this is what you should do. This is this week, this is what you should do. And it has like a list of exercises that you should do. And um, there's just so much of that everywhere. that It's so easy to be persuaded and to like kind of fall down that rabbit hole that you need to go on a diet and you're that you don't look and that you're not perfect right now. You can do much better. And um Even really, like, even people that I think are very skinny in Korea, like, like girls who, 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 who don't look fat, who don't, who, who look perfect, you know, they, they believe that they're too fat and they believe that they need to go on a diet because they're not skinny enough. And one of the reasons for that is because of how skinny, like, K pop idols and actresses. look on tv because their weight and their diets are constantly like revealed to the public it's just like you need to look like her to be perfect and to do that you have to kind of meet what how she weighs like disregarding like how much muscle she has her height and her genetics like everything like that they just discard discard all of that and just focus on the number and so everyone's trying to reach a certain number Okay, so you have these kind of private informations that are just displayed to the public. And a lot of them can be fake. 
but no one knows what to believe anymore because it's just all over the place, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, I know you've lived in quite a lot of places around the world and how would you say, like, do you notice um, a difference? Like, what are the differences you notice um, if you compare South Korea to very places you've lived in? I've never been to a place that actively um, um, pretend, like actively um, mistreats a person because of their weight before. Like um, in other places, weight was never an issue or a topic that ever came up in any of the conversations ever, like on TV, with my friends, at school, at home, like it's never a problem. I never even thought about it twice. It was just a, it was just like, um, it was just there, you know, like I never cared about it. It didn't, it didn't matter much to me. It wasn't important. But then in Korea, it suddenly overtook my life. Like I just heard about it everywhere on TV, um, conversations between classmates, like, um, in just public places, the, um, social media it was just everywhere even at clothes stores because the clothes size i don't know but asian people they have a smaller physique in general so their clothing size is very different from um here in europe for example because they're a large can be seen as a medium here and then an extra large is a large but then just just those numbers you know like they ask you what size are you and if you say large or extra large you just feel worse in yourself like i'm a larger person i need to wear a larger size clothing but it's just when in reality it's just like the measurements are very off and like something that's regarded small small there is actually extra small here but something that's regarded extra large there is like a large here so there's just that like labeling and so i was very self-conscious everywhere i went like the way i looked the way i dressed i found myself wearing more baggy clothing because i just wanted to hide my figure and a lot of people do that in korea a lot of people wear baggy clothes monotone colors to look thinner to hide their physique because they don't want because they don't have confidence right like here you see um a lot of crop tops and a lot of like jeans shorts and a lot of um short sleeves everything <laughs> like that is the trend nowadays but still like everyone no one seems to mind it everyone wears it with confidence everyone looks very good in it but then in korea everything mm, it's kind of like crop things are reserved for the skinny the pretty people and if you're not that then everyone just wears very baggy very um monotone black or black a lot of black black baggy like hoodies t-shirts um sport shorts it's very popular as well and that's just become just that's just become like this style of clothing you wear if you're bigger or if you think that you're fatter so mm -hmm. as you can see body positivity isn't exactly a big isn't exactly a big movement in korea and um yeah Wow. You've mentioned school and how, how it, like, how it did or didn't go uh, with your classmates talking about weight and these kind of topics. Um, at what age um, would you say Korean students start, start caring about their weight or their appearance in general? It can go on as early as elementary school, like fifth, sixth grade and then it just continues until the rest of your life because you're constantly judged on your appearance it's a very appearance judgy based society mm -hmm. so but yeah um even now because of the influence of social media and say like elementary school students they can feel very self-conscious about how they look how they weigh when they shouldn't at all and like there was and, and like if you can get bullied a lot for being like a bigger size girl or a guy for being a bigger size person 
So then they'll go on diets as early as elementary school to try and lose that weight before middle school or high school, you know, try, try to fit in, fit in and just be accepted by their classmates because it's very brutal the way that um, people make fun of you. They Mm. target um, weight, appearance, what you look like, what you look similar to. Like, I don't know if you've heard the term ojingo before. It means, it means, um, ojingo means squid, I think. Yeah, it means squid. So basically you're comparing someone to looking like a squid, which means they look ugly, right? Oh, and mm-hmm. that's a very common term you hear in Korean schools. Like I, like a lot, like the guys in my class were all called ojingos. <laughs> and um, I shouldn't laugh, but like that was a very commonly used term. And like even like friends, they would call each other like, "Oh, you're such an ojingo," you know, like, "Oh, like you look like a squid. How dare you talk? How dare you talk like that?" You know. So they label you so like a certain way. which means that you don't have the right to say to talk about certain things. You can't make judgments on other people's appearance because you're 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 squid. So you have no right to make an, so you have no right to judge other people's appearance or oh no you're too fat. You can't judge other people's weight. Look at yourself. Like focus on yourself first. It's kind of that. It's like kind of like that. And so it's it's not good for the mental health. It's not good for self confidence. And, um, but people see it as a way of like, um, hitting reality, like hitting, you're hitting reality so that you come across with your own problems quicker and you try to fix them quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at such a, such a young age and like early stage of growth, I mean, you just grow up having these standards not even as like guidelines they're just i i'm guessing but like they're just you just assimilate them wow i'm gonna be honest i've run out of questions but (laughs) is there like is there anything you feel um well going back to diet culture and like i've i've mentioned that it's not healthy at all But another thing is that um, uh, nowadays Koreans are it's they're promoting a healthier diet, even though if that means like reduced meal sizes. But they're well, I wouldn't say it's ex- exactly very healthy. They we have something called cheat days, which I'm sh- which they do also have in the in the in the Western society as well. But then on cheat days, it's like you can eat whatever you want, and you w- and you'll be completely fine. But on the rest of the days. you are not allowed to eat anything that you like. And you have to stick to this strict diet of the same foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you do cheat or like eat something that you want, then you failed your diet and you're back to day one. It's kind of that stigma. But the problem is that um, in Korea, the, the consumption for sodium has increased and also the consumption of fat has increased a lot as well. because of mukbang cultures and like the whole trend surrounding food and all the fast foods that are around. So the so society is very contradicting because on one side, they keep telling you to lose weight and become prettier and become a better version of yourself. But on the other side, they're talk, they say, eat all of this, this um, delicious food and follow the trend and eat the delicious food, which are all... very fattening, very high on sodium, like deep fried food, you know? So I find it very funny how they want people to be skinny and perfect, but then they're promoting and um, encouraging, you could say, people to try all these new food trends that are very high in calorie or are not very healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Quickly, what is the mukbang culture? Oh, so, so mukbang is basically like um, it's basically it's one person eating food, <laughs> large amounts of food, and um, people watch it because it, it's kind of like a um, what do you call it? Like satisfaction from a from a viewer because 
sometimes a lot of people that are on diets watch this because they can't eat the food so they get satisfaction about of about watching people eating it for them Oh, but yeah okay. that's kind of how it became popular like people who were on diets kind of used it as um sat satisfaction and kind of as their guilty pleasure you may say watching other people eat food that you can't eat right now Oh, mm hmm Okay, so it's kind of a, you're projecting what you can't do on, okay, wow. <laughs> um, that's, I would like to say it's surprising, but very honestly, I feel like I can understand why this happens. So, mm. is there, are there any questions perhaps? Um, or anything you'd like to, to mention? Anything else? Um, I guess I, I guess like the last comment I will make is that um, everybody needs to work on the the Thai culture in Korea and to improve it and to start promoting body positivity. And the fact that all bodies are different and we all look different, but we're beautiful, like, regardless. So I feel like that's one of the biggest um, problems that the government and society, social media, should um, come up with a solution for. Because it can't keep going like this and this toxic culture of being expected to lose weight and being expected to weigh a certain weight and look a certain way to be considered beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if we're done here, um, thank you very much for joining us today and to, for addressing this topic. Um, to everyone watching us, um, thank you for joining us too. If you have questions, don't hesitate to um, ask them in the comments. Um, would be glad to answer them. And on that note, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Goodbye.